Hey y'all, it's Betsy with Happily Ever After, etc. And welcome back to another gardening video. So today I have a few things to plant. Um, mainly cone flowers that I'm going to be putting right here um, because Biddy, my little Yorkie, thinks that these lambs ear, which I use as a ground cover throughout my entire garden, are easy enough to walk over and she just trots through them and goes under the porch to hang out where it's cool and shady, even though there are two other plant tree entrances at the back of the uh, steps. <laughs> it has been raining all day. It's supposed to rain more tonight. It's supposed to rain tomorrow. So I wanna get these in the ground before all the rain uh, starts back up so that they can benefit from the rain. I have been growing coneflowers. I'll put some footage up in milk jugs since January. And while I have planted out almost everything else from those milk jugs, the coneflowers are just not growing. They're not getting bigger. They're still teeny tiny little baby plants. And while I'm still going to keep watering them, I'm going to continue to keep hoping they will grow bigger because I want to plant kind of a whole, whole bunch of them back here to fill in the space behind the nandina, create a little wall that Betty can't walk through. Um, I don't know how long it's going to take for those to get big enough to plant out. And then, even once they get big enough to plant out, when you grow coneflowers from seed, they often take a few years to get as big and beautiful as the stand I have around the corner, which I planted last summer was their first full summer. I planted them the fall before that. So I'll show you that as well. But all of that to say... I found these two coneflowers at the nursery um, two days ago. Mom and I went to get her some short zinnias, like the ones I planted right back here. She loved mine so much she had to have some, so we went and we got her a flat, and they had only two of these white coneflowers for $12, which I thought was a great price. These are a Magnus white coneflower. They're supposed to get two feet tall for the foliage, and three feet tall for the blooms. So I'm going to plant one here and one there, and hopefully they will get big and beautiful over the years and self-seed in this area. And I can plant some of the ones I'm growing in the milk jugs, but I'm gonna try to get this done before it rains. I also have one gara that I need to plant, but that'll be quick. And right here, you can see what's missing if you've been following along. Finally dug up the big, beautiful, ornamental poppy that I planted in the spring. Mom wanted it, and it was supposed to be pink. It was orange, so I said she could have it. We dug it up and brought it over to her house. So I'm going to plant out the last of my tall, 36 high inch uh, zinnias that I seeded in my milk jugs, and hopefully they will fill in this corner. We can get some tall zinnias and some tall cone flowers to fill in back here. Biddy will be forced to use the non-plant populated areas as an entrance. Maybe my lambs there will continue to fill in as a ground cover, worth a chop. So we've got our lantana up front, which gets, well, this is probably about as tall as it's gonna get. And then about a foot and a half. <laughs> Same with these gumfrina, these get 18 inches to two feet tall. And then the coneflowers will be the third tallest layer behind, so always trying to get that stair step to look. So let's go ahead and get planting because I honestly don't know if it's going to start raining on us or not. Great.
All right, so got it all done. You can see we have one, two cone flowers right here. Hopefully we'll be able to add more in this little nook back here behind the Nandina. It's hard to say because really cone flowers, if they like their spot, can get huge, in which case there might not be room for more than two. So this is kind of a great experiment. You can see how well these do this here and see how my ones around the corner do because, you know, planting seeds back here, if they get too big and I got to take them out, then that's not a huge deal. I don't want to have to pay $12 for things that may not fit. <laughs> oh, so this one especially, I am loving how it looks right there. And I'm loving the mix of the coneflower, the gumfrina, and the lantana, the lamb's ear, the nandina. Like it's all coming together. Now I do still have two mums in here. This one's coming back beautifully for fall and I let it bloom because it was, it, it died back to like one leaf. And so when it put up this many shoots and this many blooms, I just said, you go girl, I'm going to let you do your thing. So I don't want to stress you by cutting the blooms off. This one is still just dead. So I think once this one gets big enough to move when it's not going to be stressed, I'm going to move her somewhere she can shine. She, they were both, I'll put some pictures like huge and beautiful last year and they just must not have liked the cold even though this is a fairly well protected spot so either move this one where really protected or I might just keep her in a pot by herself because she's still my favorite so cone flowers these should be the tall ones but even if they only get this big these are tiny cone flowers this year I will be happy these are still really pretty. Different varieties. These are meant to stay tall, whereas these are meant to get big. So also went ahead and planted the three milk jugs with our tall zinnias. I grew these from seed last year and then saved the seeds. Grew these from the seeds I saved from last year. <laughs> I still wasn't sure if I was going to plant them, so they've just been struggling along. So I just went ahead and instead of separating them out and planted them as one clump from each milk jug. So one, two, three milk jugs. If they root in and do well, I had these babies in front of the crepe myrtle down here last year and they literally got to be massive, 36 feet high, really bushy, big, beautiful blooms. So cross your fingers that they root in. There's still there's a foxglove here, a foxglove here we just planted. This weird empty spot where you can see I cut back all the mascara, mascari. So, might put some more zinnias here. These guys actually reseeded, not in the garden, in front of the garden. This is where I had them last year. They were supposed to be these short zinnias, and instead they were 36 feet tall. 36 feet, 36 inches. But you can see where they're all coming back from last year. The wind must have been blowing this way. So instead of digging these up, I am literally just going to let them go for a little while. And see how many of them get big enough that I could transplant here and fill in whatever space I need to. And then I can pull the rest. So rest of our project was around the corner here. In the cone flowers so these are the cone flowers that have been here for about a year year and a half you can see my bt because i've been battling grasshoppers on them and the bt seems to help but i have to spray them like every day but look how tall they are look how full they are this is one two Three, four, five, six, seven plants. And here's the thing. There's one, two, three plants right here, this massive one. And so I dug this massive one up last year and I moved him up here and I planted him. This is him right here. The OG original big boy. And I must not have got all the roots because this one came back. 
So they obviously like this spot. I had a whole bunch of other stuff planted in here last year. I had a whole bunch of um, a river of Gara, which you can see the end of the river. The Gara wound all the way through and came up here. I had Angelonia. I had Cosmos. The Cumflowers just ate everything. And they're beautiful, so they can. Like, I'm just going to let them have this space. So that is why we're just going to have to see how the Magnus ones do down the way. While I do want them they're not as aggressive as these purple ones. So, you know, we just planted this bee bomb in front as well. So hopefully that'll be a nice, uh, 12 inch layer in front. So right here is where we planted the fourth Gara. So this one we got on the Clarence rack at Lowe's. There's this weird spot right here where there was a Gara. The Gara kind of went this way. So I popped him in 75% off. He was $3.00. Mom got a million other things 75% off. I had to fight her for this one plant. She got two other Garas, so she really wanted this one. I was like, no, I got it. You literally filled the rest of the car. This one plant is mine. <laughs> so, of all my other Gara, this one sent up one branch that's really, really tall and really airy. The rest are a little shorter. And honestly, like, I don't even care. I like it. Got to get my rose under control. He's growing out from the house. But the more this just all grows together, I like the wild look. I just want it to be one big wild jungle. So bring you right down here before we go and show you the coneflower babies. So these are all white coneflower babies. Look how, lo look how small they are. This was a whole, a uh, whole container of them and only the ones in the middle survived. The ones at the front of this container survived, but they're still small. So these are all whites. And then I have a bunch of purples, which are doing better. These are bigger, but like barely. I just don't know that these will ever get big enough to plant out, but like I said, I'm going to keep trying. Moved them all up from over by the shed. But these comb flowers, man, they are really, like, loving their life. Maybe one day the white ones will be as big and beautiful and we'll only need two. And the all the baby ones will grow up big and strong and beautiful and can go live at mom's house because she wants some too. So that's the dream. For now, I'm gonna go inside before it starts raining again. I'm just glad I got all of these things in the ground. Um, if you've planted a Magnus coneflower in the white, let me know, cause I'm pretty excited that I found those two and they were such a good price. But uh, I don't know how long it'll take. Maybe next year they'll be this big. Maybe they'll never get this big. Maybe these are just bees. <laughs> Mom planted the same five or six coneflowers I did originally in her yard and hers are still half this size. Whereas, you know, some of the things that she's planted, her Gara, we planted at the same time, hers are four times bigger than mine. So sometimes things just really settle in one specific spot and like that spot more than you ever thought they would. I'm not gonna argue. They're very pretty cone flowers. Bye y'all.